<laughs> we need to call a priest, but can you bless our trailer? No. What? Look what item it is. Stop. Look what item it is. Look what item it is, dude! Dude, look what item it is! This is the reason why our motorhome keeps breaking apart. We had the Ouija bird set up. It just kept spilling out run over and over again. Her And she just fell to the floor face first. You know, it spelled out Zozo a few times with me on the Ouija board when I was younger. And I kind of feel like that's what opened up some bad portals. So when he checks the phone, it's saying he has a missed call from the house that he's in. He sees that it leaves a notification and that that message was left. Like his aunt who did the first spell on him was like, you're crazy. Like, and called him and were like, you need to pay up. If not, we're gonna kill your wife. We're Hillview Manor right now, which actually is kind of a cool place for us to be. We were here four years ago, 2018, and we were talking about this earlier. Our video that we made here was 15 minutes long. Our videos now are like three hours. <laughs> <laughs> and that's like if I edit it really quickly. Yeah. It's so weird thinking about that. Like when we first came here, we knew nothing about the paranormal. Mm -hmm. Like we just were like, we're walking around with like a device here or there. We were learning. Yeah, we were just learning. And it was, and it's so cool. You pointed that out today. That you're like 15 minutes. Like 15 minutes today is like, that's how long we wait for a cat ball to that's go That's a cat ball session. That's literally one... <laughs> Well, wait, were we, we didn't even really use tools back then like that. Did no, we? dowsing rods, I believe you touched and someone else had a K2. Wow. And that was like pretty much it. And we were also here, I forget what the girl's name was, but she was a younger girl mm -hmm. who was like a, a medium. Like that a was medium. our first time ever working with a medium. Yeah. Which is like a young, how, how silly of us. The what? first time we ever work with a medium is just like a little girl <laughs> who doesn't, even, she doesn't even have a driver's license. And here we are like, can you let us connect to the dead, please? <laughs> <laughs> Yo, she did good though. She, she she really was a medium. But then she we have good. like Patty and Patty. Every time we work with Patty or Linda mm -hmm. or Zachariah or Kelter or anyone else, they're like they make sure that we're solely protected. This little girl's just like, come on, follow me. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, they're waving to you. <laughs> we're like, who? She's like, it doesn't matter. <laughs> Go. <laughs> yeah. Isn't that like pretty bizarre? Yeah. And we're just like, oh, this sounds cool. Like we had no concern for like safety. Mm -hmm. We didn't take any of those precautions. Yeah. We we're just like, yeah, we just want to see a spirit. <laughs> <laughs> I know, but it's really cool to think about like how much better we've actually gotten at ghost hunting since then. And how much more we like understand it. Yeah. Which I think is really, really cool. Yeah. For but sure. Maybe we don't understand it well enough. Why? Because, okay, I don't literally right now, there is someone that just drove an hour and a half with his son to try and fix our motorhome because mm -hmm. everything is literally falling apart on it right now. Yeah. And two days ago, out of nowhere, we had one flat tire on our trailer, two flat tires on the truck. And now the motorhome, the mirror is like vibrating off. Our jacks aren't working anymore. Our taillights stopped working. The trailer lights have stopped working. Like everything on our road trip that's towing all of this. Yeah is falling apart. It's, it's because we're towing all of this. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we need to call a priest, but can you bless our trailer? <laughs> can you bless our Dybbuk boxes? <laughs> we need to douse our tires in holy water to make it through the rest. We're eight, we're eight days in and we literally have not gone a single day without a mechanical failure yeah. on this trip. It's been so bizarre. I mean, even starting the trip, I almost didn't even make it to the first place. My plane hit a bird. <laughs> Wait, no, 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 sorry. I, th I think a bird hit your plane. Yeah, okay, okay, yes, yes, yeah, correct. The, the bird just kamikaze into your plane. Be yeah. like, no, you're not making it, Corey. Yeah, yeah, it was, I was calling it close, for we, sure. So this has been a very interesting trip, so I wonder, maybe we still don't know as much. We definitely do not know as much as we <laughs> should know. No, we know. We're just being stupid. Yeah, we just don't listen. Yeah, <laughs> we no. literally don't listen. No, we know. Like, I was literally, I was talking with Jerry earlier, and I was like, we should probably be, like, saging the motorhome every night. Like, we should be waking up and, like, playing, like, good frequency music and, like, saying prayers and thanking God for protecting us because so far, I feel like, you know, we are safe, but something's trying to destroy the motorhome. The only reason I'll say we should sage the motorhome every day is because that'll definitely smell better than how it smells right now. <laughs> <laughs> we, we got six dudes and two girls in this motorhome and it smells like 60 dudes and zero girls. It smells so bad it does. in this motorhome. Yeah. It yeah. also doesn't help that I store my, I don't think anyone knows where I store my dirty laundry. Wait, what? <laughs> we where, have, do, where do you put it? <laughs> we have a futon couch, like one of those like collapsing ones. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> the living room. That's pretty much the, the living, living room. room. Every, every other spot in the motorhome is full other than the shower. So every night I just take off my dirty, sweaty ghost hunting clothes and just stuff them behind the couch, which is where everyone sits when they eat. I'm outing myself right now. So every time we eat dinner, 
Yeah. Your boxers. Yeah, dude. <laughs> is below the pizza box. Yeah, and like and last night I laid on like the in the morgue at Fairfield Infirmary, so you just got that smell in there. Yeah. So yeah, maybe let's start saging the motorhome. No, I, I really do think that we should. I do you, think we should. You should you should come out with your own cologne. Yeah. Sage. <gasps> oh, Sage. Sage. Sage by Ye Rock. Oh, <laughs> I like that. And let's make it French for no reason. Yeah. You know? And it could be like, holy water. What does that mean? Holy water, dude. Oh, uh, oh. <laughs> I was like, dude, this guy's speaking French right now. <laughs> yeah, I it up. Wow. Right. I was like, dude, that was cool. Wait, would I, I feel like that might work. Yeah. Could you hybrid like protection, but also smell good? Oh. <gasps> Would you guys buy that? Would you guys get like- Oh my God, dude, let's go. Yo. Jerry, start bottling it. Let's get, <laughs> Jerry's the merch guy that we're talking about. Dowsing rods. Dowsing rods. Oh. Yeah. Cat balls. Cat balls. Yeah, I know, I get it. But what would a cat ball smell like? <laughs> <laughs> maybe An we'll- Answer carefully. Yeah, maybe we'll pass on that one. What would it smell like? I, I don't know. Yes, you do. What would a cat ball smell like? I don't know, think of it. It's your business now. What is that supposed to be? You gotta expand the product line. Huh, okay, let's see, a cat ball. Maybe like a, <laughs> maybe like lemon. Okay, that works, cool. Yeah, right, Good like job. lemon, yeah, yeah. Just like lemon, maybe That'd like, be... a, like a, a fruit mix. Yeah. It's got all these different colors of different fruits. Yeah, ooh, lemon and mango. Do it. All right, bet. Good idea. Let's definitely do that. Um, yeah, we were just, it's been a very interesting trip. I think we are, this is the 18th. We started our first night on the 10th. We left on the 9th, nine days in. Yeah. And it's like, every time we think we know something, we don't. Mm -hmm. And it's also been fun. Uh, we, we've been, we, we investigate every single night after we do these live shows. It's really fun to watch people that have never investigated before or the people that have a lot and just like all the different things that they do. And people that are always like, I want to go alone. And then like mm -hmm. an hour later, you're like, it's time. They're like, never mind. No. It just, <laughs> <laughs> like every single time there's like eight hands that go up. And by the end of the night, I'm like, who who went alone? No one. No yep. one went alone. Yes, because when you're actually doing it, it's like, oh, this is this is real. Like this is scary. Yeah. A lot of people, you know, like obviously you get very excited and you're like, oh, that's nothing. Like I've been watching them do that. Like I, oh, oh, Corey's a baby. Corey's scared to go to that room by himself. I can do that. But then when we lock you in the basement now you're scared <laughs> oh how does it feel jacob <laughs> wait that should be a cool new way to uh just do like a way for people to investigate with us huh we just like have people show up to a place in like la or some haunted location yeah and if they can go like 30 minutes without like squealing crying screaming or anything then we're like you can join the team mm -hmm. Wow. Like, but an extreme version of a challenge where not everything is actually good. Like we actually have permission to do that, you know. To get scare? To, to, yeah, to, to, to get them. <laughs> Everybody would get scared. Yeah, dude. Nobody's joining the team. Yeah, <laughs> everyone would be like, oh, what is he gonna do? Like whisper in my ear. No, I'm gonna make the chair fall through the floor. <laughs> <laughs> You're gonna booby trap the <laughs> yeah, room. Yeah, dude. Would anyone be willing to try this challenge? Ooh, wait, make, make noise if you'd like to try the challenge. <laughs> I feel like this would be really fun. Okay, but this is Elton we're talking about, guys. I walked outside my house and a giant 10-foot hand smacked me in the face. Okay? Are you sure that you want to do this? <laughs> <laughs> Everyone's like, yeah! Dude, if they signed the waiver, I'm going hard! <laughs> oh my god! That's a, it's, it's a funny idea, but that's oh, terrifying. I'm trying to think of all the ways, like, the Saw movies would have ended, but, like, if you if you didn't like bleed out, you know what I mean? Like <laughs> you know what I mean? Like weird thing, like to that level, but you don't get hurt. You just get traumatized for a really long time. Oh yeah. And then you grow up to be a ghost hunter. So. Yeah. Oh yeah. Perfect. <laughs> Ooh, I think this would be fun. Yeah. What would be the best booby trap? Wait, no, I'm giving away secrets. No, we can we can plot on one. We can we can think of one good booby Ooh, trap. Ooh, I know it would know? be a fun one. Hmm. Uh we we have them sit in a chair. Yeah. We tie them to the chair. Okay. We blindfold them. Okay. And then all the walls disappear. Okay. And then we wheel them away. Yep. It's 30 minutes. We can drive about 17 miles. <laughs> yeah. We take them to a completely different house. Okay. We leave them there. Yeah. And that's where it ends. 
That's it. Wait, it just, wait. It ends. They don't even get to investigate. Wait. They just they it's survival at that point. Wait, no, it's like a it's like a normal person's house. <laughs> it's like we just break in and put them in the living room. The family wakes up the next morning and they're just sitting there tired. Like <laughs> you hear the family call the police, they're like, someone broke in the house. And like, can you describe them? They're a hostage? <laughs> a hostage broke in. I don't know how this happened. They, they said they're gonna be a YouTuber. <laughs> <laughs> they just wanted to use some cat balls <laughs> and wear some sage. Oh, they smell like holy water. <laughs> yeah, that's good. Dude, yeah. I really want to make a sage perfume commercial now. Just, <laughs> oh, God. just walking down the halls of like Indiana State Sanatorium, just through <laughs> rusty medical beds, just ah, uh, ooh, ah, uh, ah, uh, sage. <laughs> Sa- sage. <laughs> I like it's that. A good name. That man. is a good name. It's a good name. And I would wear it. I would want to put something in it that does protect you. You know, it, it shouldn't only smell good. It should actually have like. Yeah, no, it holy should actually water. be. Yeah, it should actually be sage. 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 Actually put some sage in it. Okay. Do you ever smoke sage? What? Like, do you ever just like, act like, you know what I mean? Like Can sage? you do that? <laughs> I don't know. Try it. <laughs> you got to ask Wiz you? Khalifa or something. Not me. <laughs> <laughs> like, but like, can you, like, can you and. I know. I, I don't think. No, I don't think that you could smoke sage. Oh, I, okay. You wait. Could. Can you wait? Can you? Can you? Like, do you die? What if that's the secret Dude, to living longer? All this time, your skin's been protected, but your lungs and your liver are just dying. <laughs> Until you uh, <laughs> had a little sage circle, just everyone oh. passing it around. <laughs> it's like, yeah, dude, you gotta hit this. I'm talking to God. Dude, it's 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 bless, bless, pass, bless, oh, bless, bless, pass. bless, pass. That's that's the new system. Yeah. That's oh. hilarious, dude. There's something we we've been talking about for a while because it feels like our motorhome situation now is like Final Destination. Like we're just constantly like waiting for those logs to come off the back of the truck. <laughs> no, we're not. Through the w- dude. Okay, we are. Dude, waiting. it's yeah. like I, I woke up this morning uh, to hearing us being driven off the road, mm-hmm. a truck blaring at us, and yeah. us just like in the the, the burnout strip, yeah. the rubble strip, just. Mm-hmm. So, dude, I don't know. Like, if you're coming out to our tour in Wyoming. I hope we make it. Like, <laughs> yeah, know. me too. Yeah, you guys pick the best date. It's early in the tour. <laughs> no, seriously, I'm I'm curious to what's gonna happen because the tour is so early on and everything is breaking. Yeah. Seriously is. Do you want we should make a movie? Like what like what kind of movie? What was that what was the movie like Little Miss uh, Sunshine? Just like a little road trip movie? Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Oh, that'd be a fun movie to make. Like Little Miss Sunshine, but they're like ghost hunting buddies. But like throughout the road trip, one of them gets like really evil. That's you what we do. And they start That's like, you. Yeah, and they start like buying haunted items and like surprising their friends with it. And they're like, just get in the motor home. And they put them underneath their bed and like, don't worry, you'll be fine. That's the overnight channel. Yeah, dude. <laughs> That's literally the overnight channel. That's what you do. There, I don't think you know this. There's one movie. Really, has anyone ever seen As Above So Below? No, noise. No idea. Yeah, As Above So Below. Yeah, yeah. Oh, wait, really? Not that many people have seen it. Interesting. Hmm. Okay. As Above So Below is like one of my favorite movies ever. Uh, and it's literally about... They're trying to find the Rosetta Stone and all these secrets and they think it's buried in the bottom of the catacombs and it flips them and then the alternate like hell, heaven, switch, right? As above, so below. And they go through it and it's like mythical and it's like kind of about, right, religion and all that fun stuff. But I think there'd be a really cool movie to make because there's this place called, and I, I would be curious to see if you counter me on this, but there's a place called Hoyabachu. Yeah. Right. And it's got this like weird circle patch in the middle of the earth and like no vegetation grows there whatsoever. Mm-hmm. And then that made me realize it's like, okay, Cool idea would be like so below as above. Flip it over, make a sequel to it, a part two to that movie. Okay. But the difference is they always talk about how, right, God banished Satan, right, and mm-hmm. hell. And we we view like view hell as in the core of the earth, mm-hmm. right? That's like how most people view it. But what if the reason why that circle is there is because that little vegetation patch is where he like was sent through the earth into the core. Oh. And like, what if we unlocked that secret? And we like went underground and found Satan's home. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> oh my just, you, you God. You know what I mean? Like a little like good cop, bad cop, buddy, buddy movie. Wait, you just going to ring his doorbell? Yeah. He <laughs> <laughs> just go down there. It's like, oh, there, that's where he lives. Yeah. Ding dong. Satan answers that he's like cooking cookies. He lives in like one of those like hobbiton holes. Like, you know what I mean? Like in Lord of the Rings, he's got like one of those, like you just like open the log on the tree. Yeah. And you just like walk down. He's like, oh. You found me. Wow. <laughs> Is it so, to say it have an accent like that. Yeah. Oh. oh, you found me. Oh, it's my nice set time. That would, okay, that would make it a comedy. Oh my God, that's that's the Sajay commercial. 
it's Satan, right? And he's just like, oh, yes, I'm a bad man. <laughs> what are you going to do? Oh, oh, look at you. You're possessed. Oh, you're going to die. You have cancer. <laughs> he's just like, ah, ah, ah. And then you come in. You're like, not today, Satan. Sajay. Sajay. And you spray him. And he's like, ooh, la, la. <laughs> And then his horns disappear, and it's just like pigtails. He and has braids. a halo. Yeah, and he's he looks like, like Tarzan. Exactly, and he's no longer Satan; he's Satan. Oh, and, he, and he's <laughs> he looked at me. Oh, <laughs> I'm dude. I'm feeling this right now. Like I'm actually into this. That would be cool. I'm actually feeling that, dude. That'd be a cool. Can we just make that tonight for fun? <laughs> Here? Yeah. Well, we got to call Satan. No, just go to a party store and just do like a rough draft commercial. Okay. <laughs> just okay. do a little mock up. Yeah, we could. I don't know. If if I did a movie, I feel like I'd do something a little different. Oh, God. What? <laughs> okay. Yep. Like, uh, like, I don't know. I feel like a lot of horror movies are, not, they're not the same, you know, but a lot of people, they know what to expect. And it's like, would you ever expect a Dora the Explorer horror <laughs> movie? <laughs> Honestly, when she grows up, yeah. You would? She's just Tomb Raider. You know what I mean? But just, you think Dora's the younger version of Tomb Raider? Honestly, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think so. I think so. Can you find the cat balls? <laughs> <laughs> like, a, like Swiper is just a murderer. Like they're just running from him he's, the whole he's time. He goes from Swiper to Slasher. Oh, <laughs> Slasher. <laughs> Slasher? Slasher. <laughs> but swiper, sli yeah, you get it. You he's get what I'm he's saying. He's a serial killer with a lisp. Yeah, what about I'm Boots, slasher. though? What, what would Boots be? In the I've never seen Door of the Explorer. What? I've, I've never seen it. I've never seen it, so I can't help you. I can't help you. Excuse me? I've never seen it. Boots is the monkey that talks. Okay. Okay. <laughs> yeah, he's okay, Doris, Doris BFF. Okay, so I don't know. You tell me. This is your movie idea. I don't know. Maybe, maybe Boots could be like the priest or something in the movie. <laughs> You know? Oh, okay. So he comes in as a protagonist. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, exactly. And then Dora, may, maybe Dora spends the, cause you know, she's always trying to get somewhere. She's always kind of like looking for something. She's exploring. She's exploring I, to try to find the church. I have deducted that she's an explorer. Yes, yes correct. Okay. Yes. yes, correct. And just, I don't know, maybe the whole movie, they're just being chased by Swiper or what, what do we call him? Slasher. 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 Slasher yeah, correct. And you know, they're going through like, uh, what, what was that forest called? Hoi Bachu. Hoi Bachu. Yeah, but wait, we can combine the two together. Oh my God. Dora's going to meet Satan. <laughs> oh my God. Dude, wait, hold on. This might be a real thing. Oh no. This could be. This could be a real thing. But it would have to be live like- Live action. Live action, It has 100%. to be live action. Who would play? <gasps> or it could start as cartoon and then it goes to live action whenever they go to the underground to find Satan. You're a fucking genius, Corey. Dude, we're doing Dude, this. Let's do it. All right, coming out next August. <laughs> wow. Oh, what the? the <laughs> that is hilarious. None of this was planned. Straight up, we had yeah. no idea this was gonna happen. That was great. Sajay and Dora the Explorer <laughs> meets Satan. I like it. Oh, uh, lovely. I like it. Okay, the reason we are on this tour and we're doing these live shows and all these at haunted locations is for the sole reason of bringing people together. That is why we are doing this. We figured that everyone that's going to come out for the most part, watches the channel, believes in the paranormal and has a love for this and admiration for this, like a respect for it, a belief in it, however you want to phrase it. So our goal of doing this is bringing you all into one room, knowing that you probably all live somewhat in the same location and hoping that you can make friends and find other people that want to investigate with you. And then secondly is about building the community and asking people to submit their stories, share their stories. So that way everyone here, everyone watching or listening can realize like they're not alone. And other people have had these experiences and they're not the unusual ones. And maybe it is okay to share it when you know that other people have had these similar things happen to them. Mm -hmm. And tonight we actually had a lot of stories submitted. Uh, normally there's like eight or nine, uh, but tonight there was quite a few. So we picked like some of the ones that stood out the most to us that yeah. We feel like we've never heard before. Mind you, we're going to probably poke some jokes in there. So, you know what I mean? We'll, we'll make we'll make it fun as well. Yeah. We have had some wild, wild turns of events oh. with some stories. Yeah, we did. So I'm not going to get into it, but it's it's fun when we start poking the bear and getting questions and all of a sudden they're like, yeah. oh, you didn't mention that part. Yeah. So. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it's been pretty funny. So but also pretty serious. I, I am prepared for someone to be like, oh, I saw a shadow figure. And then when they're up here, they're like, oh, by the way, I also tried to light my house on fire. I'm like, <laughs> hey, you should have. That's kind of part of the fucking problem. Yeah. 
Yeah. So that's that's why we like bringing people on stage, not only to like get to know their story a little bit, but also to find out what the truth is. Because everyone's like, oh, I didn't do anything wrong. I just tried to sacrifice my mother. Like it's just, <laughs> it's, and they don't mention that in the story. No, they don't. Every time we're like, you're hiding something. We know it. <laughs> the story is just like, I had a cat ball go off once. And we're like, okay, bring them on stage. Why do you think the cat ball went off? Well, I tied my mom up and we used her as a ritual. <laughs> You laugh, it's gonna happen. No, it's gonna it's happen. Gonna, someone's gonna be like, seriously, <laughs> seriously. Someone's gonna be like, I'm not coming on stage. You're gonna get that out of me. <laughs> well, yeah. you have you have the first story of the evening. Oh, yes, I do. Starts off like this. Damn, you hit me with that R and B voice, dude. Yeah, it starts off like, <laughs> dude, you're about to make love to me with this ghost story, dude. <laughs> Where's the cat ball? <laughs> all right, all right. I'm sorry, sorry. Slice some candles. <laughs> get some Saje. <laughs> Let's okay. Pop a bottle of holy water. Ooh. Mm. Could you drink holy water? Yeah. Why could not? you? Yeah. Wait, could you actually drink holy water? Oh, it's salt water. Uh, yeah. How do you not? What? Yeah, of course you can drink it. Oh, that's how they get you. <laughs> that's how they get you. You keep buying more and more because you're so thirsty. It's literally just like Sprite. <laughs> <laughs> that's what holy water Sprite this whole time. That's a good collab. That's a great club. Let's read the story. Back to the story. I've had many encounters with ghosts throughout my life, as I'm sure many people who will be attending have as well. Accurate. The event that made me believe in ghosts was when I was a child, maybe five or six. I woke up in the middle of the night. I'm not sure what woke me up, but when I looked up, there was a little girl holding a stick and pointing it out my bedroom window. I freaked out and hid under the covers, and when I looked again, she was gone. All right, so you might say, well, you were so young, you probably made it up, or maybe you were still sleeping. But here's the weird part. When I told my family about it years later, they all had similar stories about the girl. My dad said that he would wake up and see a shadow of a little girl standing in the doorway, and he thought it was me. So, he just told the girl, go back to bed, and he closed his eyes. He opened his eyes a second later, because he didn't hear me walk away, and saw that there was no one at the door. My sister told me her story only a few months ago, where she was sleeping on the sofa, and apparently I was sleeping on the floor below her. She woke up in the middle of the night to have a little girl staring at her. Once again, she thought it was me and told me to go back to bed. But the girl wouldn't move. She just stayed there and kept staring. Is there more? Yeah, there's more. I thought I, I thought you were about to say something. Oh, I just wanted you to... Can you give them more drama? What do you mean more drama? Like, you know what I mean? What do you mean? Like, give him, give him a little bit more. Uh, like, we mean like. You know what? What? No, like, like bring the story to life, dude. Like, you know. What I mean? She then looked down <laughs> and saw that I was still asleep on the floor below her. My sister Yo. also claimed she saw a figure of a shadow man. It sounds like pimp my haunted house for a second. <laughs> That's what you sounded like that. I thought it sounded like Hulk Hogan, like walking out to wrestle. I saw a little fat sugar, brother. <laughs> All right, keep going. No, it's okay. In one of our windows, while we drove past the house, which no one else saw until our cousins moved into that same house years later and would complain that they felt uncomfortable in the back bedroom where my sister and I had used to sleep. Along with seeing shadows in the room constantly, I still have no idea to this day why that house was so haunted. What's crazy is I can relate to that. The house I grew up in always saw shadows. I know the people that then moved into that house after me and they would complain about seeing shadows in my bedroom and a man standing in the corner. So that's pretty cool. I can definitely relate to that. This is a long story. Yeah, it is. Oh, wow. I need, like, hold on. I'm going to take one of my Dybbuk box rags and I'm going to, I need to wipe down your, your boy a little. Your you need little. some holy water. You're thirsty. Y'all think I'm joking? I got Dippy Box rags right here. <laughs> Yo, I'm about to look like Red Riding Hood. You want one? <laughs> Yo, that looks like a do-rag. I'll wear it. 
All right, carry on. I'm going to put my Red Riding Hood cape on now. No one died in the house. It's on a major highway, so maybe an accident on the road. I'm not sure. But there have been many times since we moved out of that house that I tried to disprove it since I was so young. But then I wind up having more unexplainable events. There was this one time in middle school, I was up in the middle of the night watching TV. And I went out to the kitchen to grab water. And I heard a loud bang coming from the attic. It kind of sounded like a box falling over. To give some background. That was so on cue. That was actually. Was that what the bang sounded like? Dude, that was so, that was so perfect. Yeah, that was actually really good. That was just remarkable. <laughs> Wait, should they start doing sound effects now for the rest of the <laughs> Cue, cue, if there's any more sound effects, cue them up for do the sound effects. <laughs> okay. We'll, we'll make it an interactive show. Okay. Anytime I go like this, do some sound effects, okay? Or no, Elton, you got it. Okay. I'll, you, li I'll uh, listen. Okay. 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 Wait, it let's, let's start. Let's start. Everyone give me like a boxes falling sound. Why did the box let's falling sound like a laugh? <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, Give weird. me a weird. It kind of sounded like a box falling over. <laughs> <laughs> what? Did the people in the back hear that? It sounded like a box falling over. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> to give some background, this attic was a crawl space. And because it was a crawl space, we didn't put anything up there. So there was nothing up there at all. It wasn't in my head either, because when I heard the bang, my cat jumped off the counter and ran off. Uh, cat jumping off the counter and running off, please. That was good. Wow, that, that was, was actually really, really was good. Really good. <laughs> that was really okay, good. that was actually really good. The last story I want to tell, which I just can't get off my brain, since it only happened a few weeks ago. Mm. Give me a mm. <laughs> it's so funny. <laughs> we got to sample these sound effects and just throw them in the podcast. I was at the gym in the college I used to attend. Since no one is there over the summer, the way they have the treadmill set up, you are facing the wall and the doors to enter the gym are behind you. Uh, can I get squeaky doors? <laughs> So you can't see anyone come in or out. Because of this, I had my music low. Wait, can I give me give me some low R and B music real quick? <laughs> okay, there's sex music over there. I just <laughs> uh, which there shouldn't be, anyways, since no one lived in this part of campus over the summer. Anywho, I was running on the treadmill. And I heard a male voice say, excuse me. Deeper? Like the Kool-Aid man? Oh, no. <laughs> that was the one. That was the one. Did you hear the oh, yeah? <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. Okay. And I was like, oh, great. The public say. Okay. Go and I was like, oh, great. Oh, great! The public safety is going to yell at me for using the gym since I'm no longer a student. I turned down my speed and looked behind me in order to say something like, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. And there was absolutely no one there. <laughs> no one in the hallway. I peeked my head out the door and couldn't hear anyone around the halls. I think what freaked me out the most during this, the whole thing was how clear and how loud it sounded to the point where I thought there was a man standing right behind me on the treadmill. Since college, I've done a ton of exploring abandoned places, places known for urban legends like Dead Man's Hollow, and I did a few paranormal locations like Hillview Manor, Belair House, and Ohio State Reformatory. Mmm. There's mm. more. Yes. 
So I have many ghost stories with weird conversations from the spirit box, Ouija board, <laughs> where the planchette went too fast and started to spell Zozo and a few pictures of orbs. Anywho, I can't <laughs> wait to meet you guys. <laughs> I talked to Satan and anywho. <laughs> <laughs> I can't wait to meet you guys. Thank you for letting me tell my story. I'm so excited for the show. And that is from... Oh, yes. And can, can we just get one more Kool-Aid man, please? Oh, yeah! <laughs> it's so funny. You love that. It's so funny. You love that. I really hope he's a ghost one day. Kool-Aid man? Yeah, is anyone here? Oh, yeah! <laughs> <laughs> the ovulus. <laughs> oh. That would be the worst house to have haunted. Every wall would have holes in it. <laughs> Every single one would just be destroyed. Yeah, yeah, it probably would. Should we bring this person on stage? Yes, this was from Miranda. Yeah, can we have one more round of applause for Miranda, everyone? Give it up, give it up. Thank you, first off, for sharing your story. Appreciate yeah. it. So I, I wanna I wanna hear more about like some other experiences. What what kind of got you into this space? And then has anything demonic happened since the Ouija board and the Zozo situation? Because I've had the you know, it spelled out Zozo a few times with me on the Ouija board when I was younger, and I kind of feel like that's what opened up some bad portals. It honestly just started with a bunch of friends saying like, hey, you want to go to um, Dead Man's Hollow? And then I'd be like, oh yeah, let's do it. And we would just mess around with the Ouija board, and most of the time we got nothing. Like, we would just sit there for like an hour, and we'd be like, this is dumb, we need to leave. Um, but then there was a lot of times where like we would sit there, and we were down in I think it was Dead Men's Hollow that we were, it was a group of us, like maybe six. And we had the Ouija bird set up and it, nothing was happening for a solid like 15 minutes. And then it just kept spilling out run over and over again. And we were like, oh, we gotta get out of here. <laughs> and one of our friends who's, she's in a rough place in her life, basically. Um, she, when we were walking out, she completely passed out. Like I was walking behind her and she just fell to the floor face first. Oh and I was just God. like, I don't know what to do. Like <laughs> we tried to pick her up and it was just a mess. So I've had a lot of experiences. I just, I guess, what do you want to hear? Like, uh, one question, uh -huh. have at any point in time, have you tried to tie your mother to a chair <laughs> and sacrifice her? <laughs> no. Are you sure? We're going to find out if you're lying. <laughs> okay. <laughs> So you, you had a, a situation where the, the Ouija board was selling run. Mm -hmm. Do you know why? No, because it literally wasn't spelling anything before it. It literally just out of nowhere spelled run. And then I said, that's not real. There's no way. And then um, it did it again. And then one more time. And I said, guys, we need to leave like right now. <laughs> How do you know it was not like a, a, a threat? Do you, do you think it was a threat or a warning? I think it was a warning. A warning. Yeah. That like, you need to run because something else is coming. Yeah. Honestly, that whole time that I was there, I felt like someone was watching me. So I feel like it was a warning, not like a threat. And what, what about the little girl? All right. So I don't remember much. I and because I've told this story to so many different people, it kind of just feels like it kind of feels like uh, a dream in a way. Um, but it freaked me out for a long time. Um, but that house was crazy because I would have um, night terrors all the time. And I haven't since then, like since we moved out of that house, mm -mm. I have not had those like dreams that bad. So did something happen there? Like in the house? Like how is it? Is it an old house? Yeah. Or? So I think it was built in the 1970s, but we knew the people that we bought it from. Okay. So it wasn't like, oh, somebody mysteriously died or it's been there for years. So somebody could have died in it. It was literally, we knew the people before that lived there. We moved in. And like, the only thing that I can think of is that it's on 512, which is on the east side of Pennsylvania. Yeah. But um, it's, all I could think of is that maybe there was an accident or anything. Is, is 512 near Bel Air? No, Bel Air house is like south of here. Okay. Yeah. Oh, you said east side. I'm so sorry. Yeah, yeah, geographically yeah. challenged. My bad. No, you're good. <laughs> so Zozo to you means something. Mm -hmm. Zozo to, to you means something. Zozo to me means nothing. Yeah. <laughs> so where what what is what is Zozo? Because every time this pops up in the slightest, if a Ouija board goes to Z or anything goes to Z, and then oh, he's out. Like it's just like every single time. So what is that? 
because I've never encountered it. I don't know. You've briefly told me here and there. Like, why is this such a big thing? I don't know. I mean, when did when did Zozo first kind of get noticed? You know, was it from? Oh, I I remember hearing a story about this a while ago, but I remember somebody was telling me how. Pe- people would tell me that Zozo's not real, but then I'm like, okay, if Zozo's not real, then how is everyone getting it on the Ouija board? And you know, why is everyone having these crazy experiences after getting Zozo on the Ouija board? So to me, I've kind of taken it as, cause you know, manifestation is real. I think enough people believed in it that Zozo is a demon named Zozo and is literally running the Ouija board realm. And so whenever I see Zozo, especially, you know, back when I would play with the Ouija board when I was younger, that was an instantly, you know, say goodbye and close it out because all of my Ouija board experiences were very, you know, traumatic to me. And it was, you know, it's just, I don't know. Zozo, Zozo to me is kind of like another way of like Satan, at least I would, I would say, but like when it was spelling out Zozo to you, nothing attached to you, like nothing crazy happened. We saw it go Z O Z and then we stopped and pulled it to Mm. goodbye because what i've always heard is that it's a demonic entity and that you do not want it to spell that out because you're basically inviting it into your life and then if you forget something as simple as saying goodbye it's attached to you yeah and so we've i've luckily been with a group of friends that is really good at being safe so when i say it's time to stop they stop which is nice did you ever play the ouija board in that house where the little girl was I haven't lived there since I was like seven. Okay. And nobody was doing anything there paranormal wise, you know, investigating. Not that I know of. Like you were so young. Yeah. So you think it could have been like a car accident and then she yeah. kind of made her way how over is to it y'all? that so many people saw that one girl. Exactly. Like I don't understand because I I told brought it back up to my dad uh recently and he was like Oh no, that that was just my imagination. I just dreamed that. And then both my mom and my sister looked at me and goes, that wasn't an imagination. Like we all saw it. And I was yeah. like, oh, okay. <laughs> Are you afraid of getting an attachment? Not really, no. Oh, okay, cool. I was kind of curious. Well, so why'd you stop with the Zozo thing? Maybe because I don't want anything negative. Like I'm not afraid of it. If it happens, I'll figure it out. But. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that's brave. That's, that's what you say when you like leave the house without your ID. You know, you know what I mean? You're like, oh, if I need some money, I'll figure it out later. <laughs> you're just saying you just casually figure it out. I forgot my demon today. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just simply saying that if it happens because I'm not being careful, then I'm being a dumbass and it happens, you know, and then you, you get whatever you need to get. But I am not going to purposely go out of my way to get possessed or to have something attached to me. Do you know the people that, you know, currently live there? Or how long has it been since you've been to that house? So my grandparents live down the road from it. So I see it all the time. Um, and my grandparents like friend lives there now. But Oh, I, your grandparents' it, friends live there now? Literally. So my grandparents bought it. Then we lived there until I was like seven. And then after us, my, my cousins moved into that house. And then they mo- moved out, I think, four years ago. And that's when my grandparents' friends moved in. Did your cousins ever say anything about a little girl? Yeah. Yeah, because all right, I never talked to these cousins at all. And the one time I saw her, I was like, we were going for a walk. And I was like, did you see anything in the house? Just asking. And then she was like, yeah, you know what? The back room, my mom keeps feeling like uncomfortable because they turned it into like a crib area for their baby. Mm -hmm. And she was like, yeah, she constantly is seeing shadows and all this. And I didn't even bring up paranormal. I just said something weird going on in that house, you know? I would love, because you're saying that your grandparents' friends live there now, mm-hmm. right? I think it would be so cool. I mean, obviously you would have to ask them, but if you could go back I think, there. I, I, don't, don't ask them. Don't ask them. <laughs> just go in. Just, just go in. <laughs> go in, break in, but tie yourself up. And you're like, a hostage broke in. Oh, yeah. We're making a YouTube channel. <laughs> Don't worry about it. <laughs> Imagine if you could go back though with tools. Yeah. And you could literally put together exactly what's there mm-hmm. and why it's there and actually be able to talk to her. Like, would you feel comfortable doing that? I think my, honestly, I struggle with social anxiety. So I feel like my most like difficult part would be asking her, not, yeah. <laughs> not investigating. I'll do Have it. Have your grandma ask yeah. her. <laughs> I won't even ask though. I'll just be like, you have permission. <laughs> <laughs> I just think that'd be really cool because I've always wanted to, like, I want to go back to my house that, you know, I grew up that was haunted, but I also don't just because it's traumatized me in a way. 
but like your experience in that house, it doesn't sound like it's bad. Like it sounds, you know, friendly at least. But the fact that you said it was like holding a stick, right? And pointing oh. out the window. Like, what was that message? Like it was, no idea. it was Did trying it to tell to you there? something. I have no idea. I think about that all the time because it, from what I remember, and as long as my like memory hasn't faded, it was clear. Like she was in a white dress. She was pointing a stick out the window. And like, I, I mean, it was like she was a real person standing there. Mm -hmm. it, I don't know. I have no idea what that means. <laughs> if Sajay becomes a thing, mm -hmm. would you be willing to, since you have no fear of an attachment, be willing to take on our first uh, clinical trial? Clinical trial. <laughs> where, we, where we get you an attachment and then we use Sajay to see if it works. 99.9% .9 effective. <laughs> Against demons and bacteria. 66.6% of them. It's going to say that on the bottle. It's so good. That's so good. It's going to say that. Would you be willing to, to volunteer for the first trial? Sure, why not? Sure, why not? That's all I need. Wow. Okay. Wow. So I just want to say this, though. An idea that we had, we were talking about doing this for over a year, but then um, who who's it? Uh, was it Ghost Adventures now doing the house calls? Yeah, Ghost Adventures house calls, yep. We were going to spend a lot of next year doing house calls. And it's actually supposed to be this year. Oh, it was yeah? supposed to be this year we we're gonna do it. No. What? What? Dude, is it actually dude? Look what it is. Look what item it is. They don't know, but we know. Look what item it is. Where is it? Look, look what item it is. Look what item it is. Stop. Look what item it is. Look what item it is, dude! Dude, look what item it is! Let's go! <laughs> oh my god, and neither Marty nor Kyle know what that means either because they weren't filming on that trip. So yeah, you can Okay, <laughs> okay, no, hold on, hold on. So, first off, okay. One, this is our first time ever having the Haunted Museum on stage. Typically, it's set up like somewhere else, like away from the stage, like where we take pictures. This is the first time ever, which also means it's the first time ever on this tour that we're like talking about paranormal things in front of these items. And nothing has ever fallen across this entire tour. Nothing has ever fallen. People have bumped into the cases, leaned on the tables. Nothing's ever fallen. We're sitting on the fucking chairs right now. <laughs> no one's moving. And it's that item of all items to fall. Okay. Okay. <laughs> oh, no, no. All right, we're going to interject uh, real, real quick on this story because... What? Dude, jo I have to tell Jonah. I have to tell Jonah about this. All right, so... I'm not going to be able to fully recall the story. So a while back, and I think still to this day, I've, I've been asking people to ship us haunted items. And with all the items, I said, please, if you send me something, don't just send me something. Like, tell me why you're sending it to me, like a story, anything on it at all. And all the items you're seeing here, uh, other than the Dybbuk boxes, are items that have been shipped. Like Ellie has now been named. That came from, I forget what country in Africa. That was shipped from uh, uh, South Africa. They've all come from all different places. But this, and there's another one somewhere up here. Oh, there it is. There's the other one right there. It's, it was a matching set. And the story that came with this was basically they thought their house was haunted and they would pray every single day to these, these two items, Jesus and Mary, and they would pray to it every single day and be like, please take this away. Please take this away. And things actually got better. But their theory was all of that negativity that they were trying to get removed from their house ended up in these two items because they would pray and then all of a sudden these things and in this area was like causing weird issues and then finally they put it down in their basement. Nothing upstairs ever happened, only in the basement. So with that being said, part of the story was every time they prayed to these items, they felt as though these were getting stronger as if they were harnessing more and more of that negative energy being confined into these. So hypercut to Stanley Hotel. Uh, we're in room 217. We've been opening like two items, three items every single night across an eight day trip. We had at that point, I think like eight or 10 items left to open. We're like, let's just open them all in 217, bring every item in that we have into one room that we literally didn't leave for about nine or 10 hours straight. So, but this, <laughs> this one along with the other was the craziest shit we have ever had happen. This might be the first ever like four hour video we ever post. I don't want to cut anything. So you can just realize how wild this night was unboxing yeah. different items. Yeah. So with these, we had a couple devices set up. I don't remember REM pod was on the table and mm -hmm. K2 was on the table. Yep. And I was the one who was reading the story. And as I was reading the story, 
every time it would get to like the parts about there's more power in these items, the REM pod would go off. And it was like almost like creating activity in the room at the same capacity that the story was being read. So it'd be like, oh, I had these items. I would start to pray like REM pod, REM pod. And it'd be like, the more I prayed, the more energy it had into it. It would go off, it would go off. And it got to a point where the story was saying like, it got so strong, I had to put it in my basement. REM pod would go off. And we're all like, that's unusual, right? Like that timing was like insane. And I said one more time, okay, I'm going to read the story one more time. But specifically, when I get to the parts that mention power, show me how much power you have. And I read the story the exact same way, in the exact same phrasing, and it got stronger each time. I would say power, it would be a bring, and I would say like it got stronger, and it would go off again. And then I waited two and a half, three minutes, and I was like, I'm going to read it one more time. I'm going to read the story for a third time. I know everything's been set. The timing is all off. There's some kind of weird rhythm in the device. As I read it the third time, literally, as I'm talking about how much power is, is in these items, the devices were the loudest and strongest they have ever been. Yeah. Three times in a row, nothing in between. Yeah. Only when we got to the part of the story where it mentioned how strong and how evil and demonic these items were. Yeah. So it's a weird thing because you haven't seen the clip yet. But when that video comes out and you see these, you'll understand why this is the reason why our motorhome keeps breaking apart. <laughs> this is probably all tied in together. Aren't we like in like a church? I, I do know. like that it fell on you though. <laughs> Cause that was supposed to be my seat, but it waited. It was like, no. Huh? Are you sure it's not the 13 No, cause they've all been opened and put protection scrolls in it and resealed. So I'm fairly confident that that is not the problem. I don't even know where this came from. You want to hold it? No. We'll put it there for right now. Aren't we? Aren't we like in a church right now? We are in a church right now. So and exactly. But do you see what just happened? Yeah, the items. Yeah, Mary we're, and Jesus. We're, we're in a church, and the Jesus Christ idol just got pushed off of the museum shelf. This is the first time we've had any kind Out of, of anything. Yeah, the Jesus Christ idol is the one that got pushed off as we're in a church. It's pretty cool, dude. No, it's literally like mocking Jesus. It's pretty cool, dude. <laughs> so we're here for right? <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you. <laughs> I'm freaking out right now. Yeah, he really is. He's actually freaking out right now. That's really cool. This is the first time we've ever had any kind of paranormal thing happen during our live show. You guys don't understand. So many people have been bumping into this during pictures. Like we've been saying, okay, we're going to have to put a rope up because stuff's going to get knocked over. The amount of times that people have bumped into this and nothing has fell over and the Jesus Christ idol just got pushed off the shelf. Yeah. While we're in a church. Yeah. Surrounded by 1,300 demons and a box. I think you exaggerated a little bit there. 1,200. <laughs> well, that was cool. Nice. <laughs> so, uh, like I was saying, if we ever do the house calls, I would love to go to that house. Okay. That would be super cool. If you seriously do that, I will definitely reach out then. Okay. Big bet. That would be sick. That Wait, was, was that the last thing that was said before that fell? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> It was, it was like, it was like, I like her. I like her. Go, Corey, go. <laughs> it's like, yes, do it. Yes. Oh, dude, I'm freaking out. How did that fall? I don't know. How did that fall? I don't know. That's, that's on video. Yeah. What the? Yeah, dude. <laughs> that's going to be a great TikTok. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, thank you so much for sharing your story. We're going to read a couple more and bring some other people on stage. Yeah. But one more time, everyone. Give it up, y'all. I'll take that from you. Thank you. Dude, dude, out of all of them, the Jesus Christ idol gets knocked over. It was a Kool-Aid man. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, 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 no. Oh, yeah. No, oh, sorry. yeah. Sorry, sorry, you got sorry, it wrong. Sorry. You see how our, our videos normally play out? He like freaks out. I'm like, that's cool. <laughs> that's literally the dynamic. He's like, oh, no. I'm like, that's awesome. That's a good thing. It's a great thing. What, what, what? I just, I just, how did it, how did it get pushed off? How, how did it get knocked over? Like, bro, that shit went flying forward. What book? Up there? Yeah. Wait, That's where it was up there. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, wait, the book fell yeah. and it pushed that off. Yeah. There's nothing in this book though. It was part of a black magic kit that was sent to us. It's completely open. Yeah. Oh, wait, there is something written in it. Wait, wait, what the hell? I actually didn't realize there was anything written in it. Wait, 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 what's happening right now? This book was empty. I'm so confused. 
There's just, there's like an alphabet in the back of it, basically. There is a an angelic alphabet. Oh, that's interesting. It's an angelic alphabet with correspondence, and it knocked over. Jesus. Anyways, let's continue. There you go. Do you think it could have gotten more power the third time you read it because you were mocking the Holy Trinity? No, I was I was straight up asking. I was like, I want to see. I was like, I want, I, I wanted that, dude, that, that, that had to have been like the most incredible thing we've ever had happen. And it's so weird, like talking about things that haven't happened because I feel like, you know what I mean? We're like leaving you out of something, but like hands down, one of the craziest, yeah. like probably straight up, I'm not even kidding. It might be a three, four hours completely uncut. Like it was just that absurd. And I don't want, I don't want anyone to think that like we hyper jumped anything at all. Like it was just no, a it was, fluid. It was insane. The REM pod would literally go off on the exact same times in the story when he would read it three times in a row like you know how hard it is to make a REM pod go off in general like there was an investigation a few days ago I didn't even have the REM pod go off. who just turned the lights on oh that was Kyle he leaned on him oh, <laughs> <God>. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Corey's paranoid <laughs> it's gonna be a fun investigation tonight yeah it is Ooh, let's do something fun can everyone just go Corey I already heard that on 14 EVPs this week. <laughs> Yo, have you ever heard 85 spirits say your name at once? No. <laughs> no, you'd be done. I don't think you'd ever ghost hunt again. All right. Let's go on to another, another story here. This one starts out uh, incredibly strong. And it reads, I have proof of people being able to manipulate things after death. My mother passed away on February 8th, 2021 at home. She was sick for years but it was still a shock and heartbreaking. She had been in and out of the hospital so many times that we expected her to recover, like always. It was hard for me because I've had many paranormal and unexplainable things happen in my life, but I couldn't feel her presence at all. I kept asking her to give me a sign. We were best friends and I talked to her three times a day. I just felt this hole in my heart. My dad was doing worse than all of us. She died on their 44th wedding anniversary and he was taking care of her. They had lived together in the house I grew up in and I worried about him being lonely now. About three months after she passed, he was sitting in his recliner and heard a cell phone ring in the other room. He's 78, so he doesn't always have it close to him and still has a landline. He thinks it might be one of his kids, so he gets up to get it. And by the time he reaches his cell, it stops ringing. He looks down and it says, Miss Call from my mother, which he has saved as the landline in the house that he's sitting in alone. As he gets the chills astonished, he gets a notification that there's a message. It sounds like a ghostly hello. I play it twice in the video. No one would sneak in and call him to play a joke during his grief. I told him, that she must have wanted him to know she's still there. I've asked to Saje, it says Sage actually, I've asked to Sage the house, but he says it's her house too. If she wants to be there, she can. He is upset that he didn't get to answer the call and always has his cell phone on him now, but this seemed to ease his pain and excite us. It's definitely something my mom would do. That's super, super cool. Um, Melanie, voice, are you here? Do you have the video with you as well? Cool. You ready? You can sit right here. That's the first time it's gonna do it again. Do you hear it? it says That's the voicemail? That's the voicemail that yeah. was left. Yeah. So I'm, I'm gonna play it one more time. <laughs> wow. Can play again? Wow. I don't know why she did it so creepy though. That's the only yeah. thing I'm like. <laughs> wow. Why did she do it so creepy? I don't know. But you know, it, it really has like given my father peace. Yeah. But she's still in the house. So, you know, it's pretty neat. <laughs> no, it <laughs> it's is. a pretty neat story. So the landline, just to, to just double confirm okay. this, the landline phone yes. from within the house yes. that your father was sitting in yeah. by himself. Yeah. Called, called his, his cell, cell phone, phone right. and leaves a voicemail. Yes. Hello. Yeah. And he happened to have saved the landline number under my mom's name. 
Yeah. So when he checks the phone, it's saying he has a missed call from the house that he's in. And he lives by himself. You know, nobody lives there. So he's like, and it says my mom's name. So already he's like, you know, taken aback. And then he sees that it leaves a notification and that that message was left. So it was pretty cool. And we just can't, we don't have any explanation. You know, we've all sat, we're like, how is this even possible? Seriously, like, how is that even possible that, you know, a message would be left? You can't. Let alone nobody's going to break into the house and yeah, call him. Like you, can, you can pocket dial and butt dial, but you <laughs> right. can't like butt Especially dial a, from a, a landline. landline. Yeah. Like, I mean, so. you know how hard that would be just to be like bumping <laughs> your phone and just, especially if you got a rotary dial and you're just out there. Like, <laughs> it'd be so difficult. <laughs> okay, but why did you say, because you said at the end, it's definitely something my mom would do. Why Why did you say that? What I think that just because she would want, def she knew that he was really suffering and going through it. And I think for her, she just had like such a like, she would get a kick out of it. She would get mm -hmm. a kick out of us wondering. Um, and I just think that it's, you know, it's just something that she would do. She would want in her own way to reach out. So um, and she knew that he was hurting the most, I guess. So, you know, um, I, I mean, I've had a lot of things that have happened since I was a little girl. I've lived, I live like 10 minutes away from the Blair house and then like 10 minutes away from um, Westward Moundsville State Penitentiary. And most importantly, the Adena Native American Indian Mound. So it's like, I feel like there's a ley line around there. So there's a lot of like, you know, neat, creepy things that happen because there's a lot of energy in that area. So I have stories going back from when I was like a little kid. Um, so, you know, I've always, there's never been a time where I haven't personally believed, but it's fun. I think that's what draws me to um, personally to like your channel and, and just such the community of ghost hunting because it's like, it gives you peace in knowing that there's something else besides like, like life can be great and amazing but it can also be like painful and hard and so it's just like knowing that hey there's something else besides you know us running around and dirtying up this planet <laughs> there's something else that we don't know about it like brings me peace personally yeah even the like really creepy things bring me peace knowing that like you know it's stuff that i don't know about or you know we don't know about did your did your mom like ever let you know that she was going to do something like that? Like with all those hospital visits and kind of knowing? You know, it's really weird because I, I don't at all claim to have a gift or anything like that, but I have had a lot of strange things happen to me in my life. So I thought that when she passed away, I would just automatically be able to feel her and I'd be able to feel her presence. I'd be able to feel her presence around me. And honestly, I have not, we never, we never talked about anything happening. So that's what I think made it a lot harder for me dealing with her death is because I just like expected her to come to me or I expected to feel something and I never did. So when I heard that message, it honestly to me does sound like her voice. And it honestly to me, I, again, I don't know why she did it so creepy, but I, I feel like she would, you know, like. Maybe it wasn't a choice. That's Maybe true. that was like her trying her best that's and that's true. just how it dictates You're right. through. You're right. Yeah. But. Or so. she just had like a TikTok filter on. And <laughs> more of that weird robot voice. I don't know. It's just, I'm glad it happened, you know, and, and um, I think it brought all of us peace but it is just something yeah. that's like unexplainable why do i feel like that story shook you up so much <laughs> i was tearing up a little yeah bit. i was gonna say i saw your like eyes yeah i heard you like kind of sniffle a couple times <sighs> i i like that i i'm, mm -hmm. I'm happy like you feel comfortable and you're glad that that happened like, yes absolutely peace, you know? absolutely and especially for my dad because he was really struggling and he still like talks to her at home and he's still you know it he still acts like she's there but not like in a you know, not mm -hmm. in a way that's yeah. bad, but, um, so it, it just is something that it's like, you know, I have a code word, my daughter's here and I have a code word. We have a code word already. Cause I'm like, I just hope. And if that's some advice I can give anybody here that we have a code word that we're not going to tell anybody else. So that if something mm -hmm. happens to me, if something happens to her, that we'll just like, know, you know, that it, yeah. it's a way for us to reach out to each other. But yeah. I wish I would have done that with her. The, the exact same thing just happened to someone in my family about a month ago. 
too. And like, I won't go into too much detail about it, but um, one of my younger cousins just passed away and uh, his phone uh, called someone and it was impossible that it could have called someone because they can't even unlock his phone because they don't even know his password. Wow. And so just kind of hearing that made me, you know. Yeah. Yeah. <sighs> yeah. It's cool. It's really mm -hmm. cool. Thank you. Thank you so much. And thank you so much for having this event for all of us. Yeah. You know? Thank you for coming <laughs> and sharing your story and everyone else here. Yeah. It's, it's, it's a really cool. I mean, it's cool to hear those kinds of stories too because sometimes people are like, they hear it and it, it rattles them, but for you, it was right. it was a really light, beneficial, yes, positive experience. Absolutely, that happened. absolutely. How did your your father feel after? Was he like more like in shock? Was he excited? Was he scared? Like no, not at all. No, he. You know, usually with everything, even with coming here tonight, he is like, don't bring anything back. Like you know, he's he's afraid of spiritual things, <laughs> but this did not bring him any because he's like, you know what? If there was anything bad in your house in this house, you know, your mom would get them. Like, you know, so for him, it didn't scare him at all because he just really truly feels like it was her. And like, there's nothing, she's, there's not, nothing to be afraid of with her. Yeah. yeah. You know, she loved us so much. So she's not going to do anything to yeah. hurt us. Just them just letting you know, like, Hey, right. like, I'm still here. Yep. Exactly. I have, I have one more question. Cause this mm -hmm. is, this is one of those I, I kind of like asking when people share these kinds of stories. Do you feel as though you should or want to try and communicate with her knowing that that ability is within the house or do you feel as though that's that's on her time her watch her choice i guess you know i have played with the idea of even just like setting a recorder out and just seeing how it goes um but i've played with the idea but it's just no i i i haven't i haven't done anything i mean i guess it is on her on her terms, I guess, because, <laughs> you know, I feel like if she has the power to call my dad, hopefully she has the power if she wants to, you know, and I talk to her too. I mean, I still talk to her, but I haven't, you know, physically gone out of my way over to the house to try to do anything. And I'm hoping that even if I'm driving in my car talking to her, I'm hoping that she can hear me there. It doesn't really necessarily have to be like at their house. I'm hoping, she, I hope and pray that her spirit isn't just stuck in their house. You know, I hope yeah. she's like, you know, happy and going on to wherever she's supposed to be. But I do think that, you know, she has the power to come back and maybe visit the house or visit mm -hmm. us, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. So. Yeah, that's, that's the story of the Blair house. Someone passed away and they decided to try and communicate and Right. How uh, how long was it after um she passed that he got the call? Do you remember? It was three months. Yeah, wow. three months. Wow. Yeah. I, I just got told recently that um for the first this is this is just a theory, mm -hmm. but for the first forty days of someone passing, they kind of roam around everywhere. And they go to anywhere that they've ever wanted to go. Go on a gap year. Yeah. A spiritual gap year. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then after the 40 days, then that's when they can kind of either decide if they want to stay somewhere here on earth or if they want to go to heaven, but may come back mm -hmm. and make visits, you know, and stuff like that. I completely believe that. I had yeah. also, I've worked with a friend. I'll just, a real quick story. I worked with a friend who, um, we worked at a department store and, um, one day he came back from break and he said, Mel, there's blood in my urine. He said, oh, you have to get that checked out. Well, anyways, he was gay and fabulous. And one of the things that he always did was he they would- typically poke, are. Yeah, he would poke me so hard in my ribs, like right in between sometimes where you almost get mad at him. Yeah. And he'd be like, look at that hot guy over, you know, like he, mm -hmm. he is, that hot guy over there. <laughs> but he would shock me when he would do it. Well, anyway, so- a week after he had come back from break, he was in the hospital and we were texting. And I'm like, I won't be able to see you tomorrow. I'll see you, but I'm going to come in the next day. Anyways, he passed away during the surgery and I didn't even see it coming. Like I just, he really hit his pain. I just thought it was like routine. I didn't realize it was as bad as it was. Yeah. So I couldn't work in that department anymore because working with where his little reader glasses were and his jacket and everything, it just like tore me up. So I switched to being a price changer merchandiser and I would work nights in the store completely by myself and one night I was in the store and I was 
um, doing jewelry and I heard this comforter fell off the wall. So I went over and I shoved it back in, took a couple steps. Yeah, it did it, it did it again. I went back to the jewelry and I'm pricing the jewelry and all of a sudden I get a poke in my ribs and I'm telling you, it was that bony finger of his. Like it was that same poke. No. And I turned around. I mean, I was just like the shivers, you know, you yeah. know that feeling. I could feel his presence. Like yeah. I could feel him there. At that same time, the comfort of boom, boom falls off the wall again. Wow. It was just something like you couldn't, and I'm the only one in the store. And I acknowledged, I'm like, Justin, you know, like, hey, I know you, I'm here, buddy. I, I got, I gotcha. Well, after that, it was, and again, it wasn't scary at all. Like it was just, he wanted me to know he was there. I mean, mm -hmm. for five minutes later, I could still feel that finger, you know? And after that, every now and then, like things would fall or whatever when I was up there and I would always just acknowledge him and it would stop, you know? So anyways, I think sometimes our loved ones like to just reach out to us. And yeah, if, just, you, just if you're hi. like receptive. You know how that terrible thing. that would be if a ghost had haunted you, but it just tickled you? <laughs> <laughs> ah, stop! Because <laughs> every time it was like that, it would be the worst kind of fear you could ever have. I mean, ah, stop it! <laughs> I mean, however they want to say hi. <laughs> exactly. Wow, that's incredible. That's thank honestly you. incredible. Thank Sincerely, you so thank much. Thank you so much for thank sharing. You. A round of applause. <laughs> thank you so much. So this is the final story. Do you want to bring some energy back? Or you want to? Yeah. Should I read it creepy? I just want to make sure we're not about to read like a really deep story and you're just like, brother. <laughs> <laughs> you want to read it? Uh, you want me to read it uh, dramatic? You want to read it? David, David Attenborough style? Okay, all right. All right, hold on. It's not that long. Okay. So, this didn't happen to me, but it happened to my dad, and he told me about it when I was 14. This happened to my dad when he was about 18. There was a family friend, Sue, that was obsessed with his dad, my grandpa. She wanted to be with him. Everyone knew that Sue was a self-proclaimed witch, but my dad was skeptical and didn't believe it. Wait, can we do the ad libs again? Okay. All right. Do you want me to start over? Yeah, yeah. Just okay. start at the witch part. I okay. want to hear everybody make the noise like okay. that. Everyone knew that Sue was a self-proclaimed witch. <laughs> but my dad was skeptical. Oh. And, he <laughs> <laughs> and didn't believe it. Any time my dad was away from Sue, he would have these horrible headaches. <sighs> Sue would be around my dad as much as she could. Sue would pick my dad and his mum, my grandma, up and drive around and try to convince them that my grandpa was cheating. <gasps> He's a cheater! <laughs> One night when he was at Sue's house, he went into the freezer to grab ice and saw a bunch of pill bottles with frozen water and paper inside. He took some. He still has the papers to this day. On these papers were curses and spells that Sue wrote wanting to split up my grandparents. Most were saying something that would happen to my grandmother so that Sue could come in and be with my grandfather. On that same night, my dad explained that there was a group of people all sitting around the table. I chatter, chatter. <laughs> and there was just a couple candles on the table. Sue made everyone hold hands and close their eyes. My dad is convinced she was speaking in tongues. <laughs> Did I hear a minion? <laughs> My dad was too curious and kept one eye open. He said he saw the flames of the candles go out and come back on. And all he saw were the whites of Sue's eyes. He closed his eyes as quick as possible. A couple weeks later, he went to his aunt to see if he had a curse on him. There's this thing that's popular with Italians to see if you have an evil eye on you. Wait, wait, go back. Go back to right before you said Italians. There's this thing 
that's popular with Italians. Meatball. A meatball. <laughs> it's me, Mario. <laughs> to see if you have an evil eye on you, it's this egg spell. And apparently, there was a really strong one on my dad. So his aunt was able to do a cleanse. And since that day, my dad no longer had the want to be around Sue. And his headaches were gone. Wow. Interesting. Wow. Uh, Eliza, Elizabetta. Let's give it up, y'all. We get a round of applause. Elizabetta, come on up. So I have one request. Okay. You must speak to us as if you are the witch named Sue. I mean, that would be pretty hard. First, I want to say is it was funny that you said Mario because my dad's name's Luigi. <laughs> 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 That's pretty cool. Right? <laughs> wow. Um, pretty so, Italian. Pretty, pretty <laughs> Italian. Um, but yeah, so it's like, that was the one thing that I felt like when I was young, I'm like, okay, that's real. And like, it was just the most surreal experience to hear my dad talking about it because he refuses to talk about it. He's like, don't say her name. Don't like. Mm. And so like when I, when you sent the email, I called my dad immediately. I'm like, hi dad. Um, can I say this story? I'm like, it's probably not going to do anything. I'm like, they might not even pick it. And now I'm here and I'm like, and, Hi, and voluntarily giving away his first name and last name. So now <laughs> everyone knows who it's it is. Fine. It's okay. fine. But he's like, he's like, I don't really care. He's like, she's dead. Whatever. <laughs> oh, wait, is she? Yes. No, she is. How does he know for sure? Oh, it's she would Italian be like over mob money. Oh, sorry. Yeah, exactly. She, she'd be over a hundred. Yeah. Point. She'd be over a hundred at this point. How old's your dad right now? 63. Oh, Wait, she would be over 100 at this point and your dad is currently 63? Yeah, so when this happened, my dad was like 18 years old and she was my grandpa's age. So okay. she was like a 40-year-old, oh, okay. yeah. So she was like okay. a 40-year-old lady trying to hang out with an 18-year-old because she was obsessed mm. with my grandpa. And so oh, these letters- Oh, so it was letters, like Stacy's mom, but it was like, you know, yeah, Luigi, exactly. Luigi's dad, I don't yeah, know. Yeah, Luigi's exactly. Luigi's dad, sorry. And so it was bizarre. And so when I- wrote about it. I'm like, mom, does he still have the letters? And he still has all of these letters. And so I sent in some pictures, so I don't know. Oh, did you? Okay. I don't have my yeah. phone on me. Um, I'll be able to pull them up. Yeah. So they're, they're super, super faded, but the gist of the letters are dear God, please let, so I'm named after my grandma. So it was really bizarre seeing, please let Elizabetta fall sick so mm. that I can jump in. And she would write to, so this was before my dad got married and she would also have make my mom get headaches. And then once my dad got like that cleanse, my mom stopped getting headaches too. Wow. And that was something that I didn't know when I was writing and I was asking my mom and she was like, no, I like got migraines. Like I couldn't get out of bed. Wow. And I'm like, that's insane. Okay. Now, and obviously you're speaking for someone who's speaking for someone. Yeah. What do you feel though, based on all the information you have would have happened if the cleanse was never done? Um, do you think it would have gone through? There would have been I, a divorce? And do you think it was at to that level where that witchcraft could have so worked? I think so because some of the letters, like the things that were written out in the letters did happen. Like what? So there was something with my uncle and she said, please not like, please don't let him have a successful marriage. He's been divorced three times now. Oh, wow. <laughs> and so I'm like, I don't know why she got the kids involved. Like, I understand if you're obsessed with like the father, like the hut, like the family yeah. figure, but she was trying to get everybody. She was trying to like, take out the support system. There was system. like family friends that she listed out. Like it was every, everybody. Yeah, like, she there wanted was not to make sure. Person. Yeah, that's that's how you take out the kingpin. You got to yeah. make sure all the others are out of, out of the way. Yeah, and so my dad, like the most prominent story my dad remembers is being picked up and she'd pick up him and my grandma and be like, oh, come look at where your husband's at. And they would drive around town, go into these like crazy areas to see my grandpa's car parked outside of a house. And she'd be like, look, he's with another woman. And like, it was never true. Oh, it wasn't. It, it was, was never me. true. It was all Sue trying to get this, like trying to convince everybody else that she like had this power over everybody and wanted, she was trying to manipulate my grandma to go crazy to leave her husband. Wow. Why Why your grandfather? Was he like wildly wealthy? Was he incredibly good looking? Like, well, like why? I don't even know. And like, I think, I can't remember. I think Sue might've been a lot younger. So my grandma was 12 years older than my grandpa. So I think because of that reason, she was like, why are you with this old lady? Mm. Like, 
you could be with me. And so like that evil eye is called the maloik in Italian. And so that's what, excuse me, when you hear, like when you have that, like my mom will do it too. Like you just break an egg in water and mm -hmm. if it starts dripping, you have to cleanse yourself. And so the way to cleanse yourself is with like this oil cleanse. And so you drop oil in like a thing of water and if it splits open, you still have the evil eye. So if it, it'll split and look similar to an eye. Got it. Mm. And it's like, it's crazy. What are you supposed to do if you're still, you know, if that doesn't work? You just kind of keep going at it and just kind of keep going at the spell until you kind of hope it works. You just keep repeating. You just keep until breaking you keep, eggs yeah, until you're, you're like, <laughs> I guess I'm yeah. not eating breakfast, but I'm cleansed now. <laughs> yeah. Like I have no idea. I don't, I honestly don't know how, especially because my dad was so skeptical. And even the, the like his aunt who did the first spell on him was like, you're crazy. Like, it's Sue. Like, it, she's not going to be doing anything to you. You ever seen a picture of her? Like, do you know what she looks like? I don't know what she looks like, but I know that there, there's been a lot of bad things that have happened to Sue's family as well. Mm, I like, there's if it's like, like a, a couple, like, there's a really big, huge murder that happened in my town from her, like, daughter. I, I can't remember if it was her daughter or her daughter in law. As in, committed the murder? Or? She got murdered. Oh, wow. Remember earlier when I was saying, like, there's always that one story that, like, there's not that much information, and then you're like, my daughter was murdered. Like, that was pretty much. Yeah. So okay. if you look, like, I put, I'm pretty sure I put, like, first and last name for Sue on the story. Okay. Uh, if you look up, like, that name, you can probably find it. Like, I, it was, like, this, this guy owed somebody money, and so they kidnapped his wife and called him, or, like, you need to pay up. If not, we're going to kill your wife. And I'm pretty sure he paid, but still got his wife murdered. Oh my God. Hey, remember and when we were talking about movies earlier? <laughs> yeah. Witches versus the Italian mob. Yeah. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> well, fun. this is my fun fact to tell everybody. I'm related to Mussolini by marriage. Wait, by marriage? Okay. By marriage, okay, yeah. yeah. So my grandma, the one I'm named after, her great uncle is Count Siano, Galetz of Siano, who married Mussolini's daughter because he was in a clan to kill Mussolini and Mussolini found out and in Germany like got him shot, which wow. is on video. My brain couldn't handle that. Yeah. That's why I hunt ghosts instead. Exactly. That was a right. lot of information. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. So basically my great, great, great uncle married Mussolini's daughter. Okay. That makes sense. That was yeah. okay. Yeah. Wow. That's a cool, that's a cool little uh, yeah. fun fact. I'm like, I'll wow. see his name in like history books and stuff. I'm like, oh, that's my family member. <laughs> that's wild. I feel like we need to look more because now, now it makes me think that in order for a witch to cast some kind of negativity towards someone, they must also sacrifice some of their own. Yeah. It's like where, like it almost makes me feel like it's a transition of negative energy. Like in order to put some evil onto your family, there had to be some bestowed upon her own. Yeah. Which yeah. is like not something I've ever heard about. It's normally just like you conjure and ah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But you never think about where it's coming from or where, yeah. where the balance is yeah. in the you universe. You gotta get that energy from somewhere. And it's crazy how many people were actually affected. Like it wasn't just like my dad. Like, which would make sense. Like, okay, you're trying to get this 18 year old away from his family so that you can break up the family. But it was my grandma, it was my dad, it was both of his brothers, it was my mom. It was a couple other people. Like there's literally the entire family is all listed out in these letters. Wow. And like some and of them you, are you still, still have faded. Them, yeah, you yeah still and they're them? dated 1978. That's really cool. So, well, so it does not say uh, Sue's last name. Okay. Do you know what it is? Yes. Because then people could actually look it up. And yeah. So her name is Sue Weiner. Spell that because it's uh, very W E I N E R. Um, <laughs> is that Wiener? She's dead. You Close. can. It's Wiener. Let's Close. just call it that. <laughs> um, but yeah, so the daughter-in-law or daughter. I I know it's like the last name is Weiner. So I don't know if she ever like if it, she married into that family. Okay, mm. Sue Weiner. 1978 era alive. What yeah. what what part of? Because there's probably a few. What part? What of Erie, Pennsylvania? So Erie, it's like an hour ish. Away I'm gonna from look here. this up now. Yeah, I'm very intrigued by this now. Yeah. So if you look up Sue, it was like I don't remember what happened with the daughter, but it was like if you look up Weiner murder, it'll come up. That's yeah. pretty cool. That's yeah. insane. It's insane. Like there's just so many loopholes. It like starts with witches to like murder. <laughs> great movie. Great, great movie. Featuring Dora. It's like Harry Potter met Breaking Bad. It just sounds yeah. like such a great film. Yeah, yeah it does. Well, thank you. That, that's a really of cool course. short. Well, yeah. And I'm going to look that up. I'm very intrigued. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Yeah, thank you so much. Dude, there are some great stories tonight. There are. Seriously. I'm going to get the Q&A questions. Okay. Can you, can you keep them occupied while I do that real quick? Yeah. Okay. 
you could please follow me, put your right hand up, put it back down, put it on your shoulder, now put it on your forehead. Repeat after me. I. I. All right, we're good. Um, so we'll answer a few of these. There you are. Is there any place you would not go back to? I mean, I would, I don't know. I, I don't, I don't know how to answer this because I would like to go back, but at the same time, I would not want to go back. Sally House. Wait, you don't want to go back. Why would you not want to go back? I, I feel like we da need to go back. It's just, I don't know, dude. The, the, the vibes I was getting there, the feelings I was getting there, it just didn't, it didn't feel comp the whole, the whole night I was just uncomfortable. You know, it was yeah. just, it was just a very uncomfortable feeling. Well, that might've been because that was the night we opened all 13 Dibbig boxes. Yeah. And possibly. Maybe that could have been it, you know, possibly. I feel like at least I owe a revisit to Sally house, whether you want to join or not, because no, 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 I would, I would go, Okay, but it's just it, that place is make, it's definitely one of the top making me feel uncomfortable. Got it. Yeah. I, I felt like I was kind of, when the video comes out, you'll see this, but we weren't allowed in the basement, which I found like very strange because apparently like someone else prior had just been in the basement and like broke a bunch of rules. So they literally like barricaded it off with like everything, literally like everything and the kitchen sink you could think of caution tape, broomsticks, two by four. They were like, absolutely do not go down there. And if you do like, we'll sue you, we'll take down your video. And I was like, okay. So, and like, that's like one of the main places to visit there. Um, and because we spent so much time opening the Dibbit boxes, we only spent about three or four hours investigating as opposed to like our typical eight to 10. So I would like to go, definitely would like to go back there um, in the near future. Yeah, may maybe it was just because of the evil that we brought there, you know? There, yeah. was, there was just a lot of times where I kind of had to be in there by myself for a minute or something. You know, people would go outside to get something and I was just sitting in the living room by myself and it was just, it was a, it was a terrifying feeling, honestly. Do you remember when the cop showed up? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The cop, the cop showed up. We're literally in this house. We're investigating and the cops bang on the door and we're like, oh no. <laughs> oh no. What has happened? They're just like, oh yeah, your motor home is just parked weird. Can you move it? And we're like, oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we were just expecting like something wild to have happened. Like the neighbors yeah. reported something, but it just feels evil there, man. It just feels very evil. I don't know what place I wouldn't go back to. I'm not really sure if there's a place. I feel like at this point, there's no need to go back to the Queen Mary. Yeah. You know, been there quite a quite a bunch now, so I feel like that one's been done. I, feel I know, like, but Queen Mary's like home now. I, I would go back to Queen Mary if it was like this kind of a situation. Yo, what if, what if we took everyone on a cruise on the Queen Mary? You got a hundred and seventy eight million dollars to make it float <laughs> again. There's no engines in it. Everything's removed. One day we just tug it. We just get a tugboat, right? <laughs> to, to, pull to, pull, to pull the Queen Mary around. Yeah. That'd yeah. be really fun that would and be extremely be. expensive. And Suicide Bridge, I don't really have a need to go back to. Like yeah. the places we've been to like two or three times. Uh, other than that, I'm always down to go back. Let's see. This question is, if you could tell people what things to not mess with when dealing with the paranormal, what would it be? Ouija board. Why? Dude, you just- You hate them so much. <laughs> it's just because like, you're literally opening portals, you know, when you're doing that. Playing with Ouija boards is, I don't know, like, I didn't understand how unsafe it was when I was younger. You know, now that I'm older and, like, I see how much it affected me, it's just not, you know, a lot of people, I'm sure, do play with them and nothing happens. But, like, my experience with it, like, the amount of ghost hunting that we've done, like, the amount of tools that we use, but it's still the Ouija board is the one that traumatized me. Like, I don't feel like anything that we use, you know, kind of attaches to you. Like, you're not going to set up a cat ball and do dowsing rods. And then, you know, for five years, you're going to see this man walking down your hall. You know what I think would be a really cool thing to do? We, we, we've kind of been talking about this a little bit uh, over the past few weeks. But I feel like there's technology out there somewhere. There definitely is. Like, right, Teslas have LiDAR in it that can now detect people. We have infrared light. We have all these different things. We definitely have, like, electromagnetic like pulse readings and, and full spectrum lighting. How much fun would it be to see if scientifically you could utilize a Ouija board or anything else and there's actually like a portal and you could actually like rig a room and do a controlled experiment yeah. to see if there's any fluctuations as you start utilizing or conjuring or anything like that. That would be sick. Just actually. a very, like actually find some like MIT people, engineers and yeah. go, how can we monitor any form of change and do like every different like layering of it to mm -hmm. see if it changes anything. That would actually That's be That's where sick. I want to get to with these investigations. I want to actually get through that like scientific barrier. Damn. And it's like, I don't want to just like start buying other people's stuff. I want to start progressing it and going, okay, can we get some 
give some money. Like it's MIT. Like they'll they'll throw money at it. Like they have scholarships. You know what I mean? It's yeah. it's funding. It's research. Yeah. And how crazy that would be if you could bring in like some of the world's most famous witches and and actually see if they can alter the energy and the environment of a room. That like, would be scientifically sick. documented. Yeah, that would be cool. This question is very on par with what we were talking about earlier. Did you believe in the abilities of the Romanian witches when they were performing rituals to protect you guys from harm? If anyone didn't see that video, it's actually Hoi Bachu, mm-hmm. um, where we brought out these Romanian witches that I found uh, through BBC. I found them through Vice. They were on a bunch of other uh, networks. And to me, it's always really cool to learn about cultures and work with the people in their cultures. It's why we're always filming with like Patty Negri, Linda, Zachariah, anywhere we can go. Like if there's an expert here, we want to work with them. Mm -hmm. And I was like, we have to do this with them. Yeah. So I think I believe them. I think it's really cool. And I think you did because you backed out. Mm -hmm. I definitely believe in them, but I feel like I'm starting to open up more to other ways of accepting protection. You know, like, you know, I've always been very religious, but as you know, I've, I've mentioned so many times, I'm definitely a lot more spiritual now. And just for some reason, you know, during that, I was just very much on a, I cannot accept protection from anything else other than, you know, Jesus. And so that's kind of why I backed out on it. But I definitely believe, you know, that they were helping. Did anyone see that video, the actual little smaller video that only has like 300,000 views, like the one actually at their house where they did the ritual? Did anyone see that video? Anyone? Okay. Do you, do you have any idea how the, where the fuck the frog came from? We have no idea. Corey wasn't, Corey wasn't there. I don't understand. They did this crazy ritual and a frog just appears in the bottom of this bowl. Sorry. Did they kill it? No, they didn't kill it. I was watching it the whole time because I knew if it died, I was like, can't go in the video. It was like this frog just appeared in the bottom of the bowl with all this like molten black wax. And I'm like, where, where did this come from? It's pretty cool. I was just curious if anyone was like, oh yeah, it was right there the whole time. Because I like, we've watched it over and over and over again. We cannot figure out where the hell this frog came from. That was like the greatest magic trick I've ever seen before me. You, you mean, because at that point, I don't know. Can you summon frogs? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like that to me, that's like the hat that that's if that's a real thing they just did, like they, we underpaid them. If they can just if they can just make frogs, I'm like, you should charge me way more. And also <laughs> probably should have led with that. I can make animals out yeah. of wax. Yeah. That would have been Definitely. a way better way to go about it. Out of all the haunted items you've somehow gotten your hands on, which one was the scariest for you? Maybe the conjuring Dybbuk box. The one directly behind you? Yeah. That one? Yeah, the one directly behind me. I'm still so proud of myself for taking that from the Conjuring house and hiding it from you completely and then just surprising you on an island that you were stuck on for the next 14 hours. Yeah, that was a lot of fun. That was super cool. I was so happy that I did that. That was yeah. that was genuinely impressive. Yeah. That was like the closest I'll ever be to James Bond. Just sneaking it. A- like, we were on a boat with it, weren't we? <laughs> we had no idea. Yeah, everyone was like, why do you have such a big suitcase? And I was like, brought snacks. Nope, Dybbuk box. <laughs> Dybbuk box. You were like, Pop-Tarts. I'm like, ah. Oh. <laughs> yeah, that that's, that's definitely one of the scariest items, I would say. That I was, was really I cool. Was terrified of that. I will say, I think that if I'm, if I'm correct, I think that was one, if not the first time, but one of the first times that I had ever like put my physical, like I put myself and attached it while doing an investigation. And that's when we were in Execution Rocks and mm-hmm. we kept getting like devil. And mm-hmm. We kept getting all these different numbers that I think lined up to something. I can't, yeah. I can't remember, but that was the first yeah. time where I was like, this might be a possibility to like channel energy through something. Yeah. So that was a super cool item. Uh, absolutely. I think the absolute worst item we have here That doll right there. Ellie? Ellie, that doll right there is the only thing that has ever made me like absolutely cat leap over a couch. It scared the fuck out of me. It like that. And it did it over cross. Okay. I not when the video comes out, it'll come out. That's part of the Stanley hotel video and Benson grist mill. That thing is wild. And it had such like a simplistic story about it. It wasn't like, Oh, I tried to murder us. It was just like, I'm pretty sure this thing is haunted. It does all these weird things. And it literally did things like, Mm-hmm. remarkably on cue multiple days in a row yeah it was yeah, that's, a, that's, a, that's a really cool one that's the only one where I'm like I don't understand you but I like you it's a cool one and then this one says Elton how do you remain so calm through what some would consider spine chilling experience uh, I think for me is like what I say all the time is this is what I signed up for fit like I, I i signed up for this like I know I'm going into a haunted location I know I'm working with different items like I do my homework on the locations. I know the stories. I know the past documentation of paranormal activity. It's like, it's what I'm here for. Like it's, I, to me, it's like, it's 
I don't know. I have the expectation. I'm like, I'm going to commit all the way through. Yeah, you're pretty brave. I wouldn't say, I don't, I don't know if it's brave. It's just yeah, like- you're pretty brave, dog. No. Like, I'm, I'm signing up for it too, and look at me. <laughs> I'm shitting. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, like, I want to do it just as bad as you do, but you're just like, I don't know, we'll be getting activity, and you're like, yes, yes, we're getting activity. Yeah, I mean, it literally happened on stage. You you walked away, and I was like, cool. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm, looking, I'm looking for the same thing you are. It's just, I don't know. I just get a little scared. And I will say, for anyone who investigates or wants to, the amount of times where that point comes where, like, some people want to bail out. I think one of the best places I can give an example I'm not trying to roast you or whatever. It's like Pendle Hill when you and Matt backed out. Yeah. Because we were getting really, really cool answers like out of nowhere. Like we had nothing and nothing and nothing. And then finally went to, went to the questions I knew you didn't want me to ask. I was like, I think these are the right ones. Mm -hmm. You bailed out mm -hmm. with Matt. I stayed with Dan. Yeah. And I kept going down the rabbit hole and I got the answers. But at that point, if we all would have left, it would have just been like, okay, cool, bye. Yeah. But the amount of times where we do get answers and it's like, do you want to walk that line? Well, I do. Mm -hmm. Because I want to get those answers. I want to push that envelope. Yeah. And even when we do investigations with people that are joining us, sometimes they back out. I'm like, don't. Like, you're okay. Like, you can, you can, you can take care of yourself when this is over. But this is what you're here for. Yeah. Like, you have an amazing opportunity to hold a conversation with the unknown. Do that. Yeah. But or if you don't, then don't regret it. Just know that if you leave right now, you're going to regret it. Mm -hmm. Or stay here and be happy and grateful that you did. I'm just, I'm more on the side of like, I'm down to talk to, you know, spirits that are visiting here, might be trapped here, you know, maybe they're stuck in the loop and like, maybe there's a way to help them cross over. And you're more on the side of like, hello, let's go find Satan. <laughs> but I'll also find those good spirits too. Yeah. No, which I'm, is good. I'm it's open. Good. I'm open to anyone. I know, but that's why I'm saying you're so brave dog. Like you don't care if it's a demon or if it's, you know, a good ghost. Do you imagine the, the intro to our channel? If it was like, welcome to the Overnight Channel, dedicated to finding proof of the paranormal only of good spirits or things that are cuddly and warm and nice. <laughs> it's like, it's not the same, you know what I mean? It's dedicated to finding proof of the paranormal, just yeah. a broad statement. Yeah, yeah. So, it's just, it's the demon side that scares me. I look at the demonic unknown, the way people look at pit bulls. Everyone sees them as like these vicious animals, but some of them just want belly rubs. <laughs> You think it what? Yeah. I've never I've never thought of a demon like that. You think you can baby a demon and he's gonna be like, okay. I think they're just grumpy. They're just grumpy and like and they're they're for seen they're seen as like demonic, but in reality it's because everyone's like no everyone's like afraid of them and, and then they they're like, Come on, dude, just I just, want, I just want a back bro, you know? Maybe. I just want I a treat. Just I little, don't know. A little Satan want a treat, you know what I mean? Like, it just... I don't know. Because there could be, like, good spirits that are kind of like assholes just because they were, you know, an asshole when they were alive. Yeah, that's me. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't, I don't know if a demon could change. But you don't... I'm just saying it's the presumption that it is a demon. Yeah, okay. But facts. I like to give it the chance to prove that it's not. Yeah, okay. Very true. You know, we all have our bad mornings. We're all like dickheads in the morning sometimes when we're grumpy and we say things we regret. Yeah. I like to view it in the same manner. Yeah. That's all. Give everyone a chance. Give little Sadie a chance, you know? Hey, Sadie. <laughs> Final question. And I like this one. This this is a good question. I like this. It's very nice. It's not okay. evil or okay. anything. Yep. Why did you start YouTube? That you go first. I started YouTube just because I like to make people smile and laugh. You know, I just, I know, I know how sad, you know, and like depressed and stuff like that, you know, people can get like, everyone's gone through it. And it's insane how you could be watching a funny movie or, you know, you're watching a funny video and like laughing for like two to three seconds. Just, it, it really takes you out of that, you know, like sad, depressed mindset. And like, you're not thinking about it and you're just giggling and smiling and like, you feel good again. You know what I mean? And I like being able to give that to people. Which I think you do. Thank I think you give that you. to a lot of people. Shucks. <laughs> <laughs> Just only like every third Tuesday when you do upload now. Dog, I don't even post no more. <laughs> <laughs> maybe. <laughs> yeah, maybe twice a year now. <laughs> I started YouTube out of happenstance. I just happened to be doing Vines. Uh, and the way I started doing Vines was an anomaly as well. I just happened to be friends with Casey James, who ended up, I think, being like the second person to hit a million on, on Vine. I used to play kickball with him. And I just like started to do it. Me and my other buddy, Walid, well, right cutting through the chase. We just did it. 
for fun and it became something cool. Mm -hmm. And then because of that, I started meeting all of these other creative people that I really loved being around. Cause I was a massage therapist when I started on Vine. I was a massage therapist uh, up until like a month before TFIL started as a YouTube channel. Wow. So you mean like those kinds of people aren't like the people I like. I like hanging out with creative, fun people that are willing to jump in fountains and get yeah. smacked in the face with, you know, shaving cream hands and not move out after. So like <laughs> those are the people I wanted. And, and getting around that energy, like the first person I ever collaborated with was King Batch. Yeah. And then it was Jason Nash and it was Lamorne Morris. And I was like, oh, these people are just so much fun to be around. And you ended up being one of those people, mm -hmm. just fun, vibrant people that have like this like cool, creative energy. And obviously Vine disappeared. I went to Facebook, I did sketches. And then one of my best friends at the time, Heath, didn't make the transition out of Vine all the way. And he was kind of getting ready to go back to Florida. Yeah. And, but this was my best friend. I mean, we spent like every day together and I'm like, I can't like, what do you want to do, man? Mm -hmm. Like, what do you want to do? And he was like, I just want to see the Northern Lights. And I was like, all right, cool. And like came up with like the TFIL, right? Like the fuck it list, a thousand things I want to do before I die. And it was like, how do we conquer this list? And we can make it a YouTube channel. We were friends. We were lucky, very lucky that we were friends with David and Liza and Scotty and Zane and like all these people that were making content. But that was only because I went the route of surrounding myself with creative people that mm -hmm. were willing to help coach us. Yeah. So, and that's how the YouTube channel started. Yeah. It was just that idea and some friends and people that were very supportive. And I will say it's hands down the best decision I ever made. I didn't have that much money. I decided to quit my job that was paying like $2,000 a week as a massage therapist to go make zero, mm -hmm. right? I pocketed everything I had. I saved it and I chased after it. And it was the best decision I ever made because it was the thing I loved more than anything else. Mm -hmm. So seriously, if there's anyone out here that's considering being a content creator, when we spoke earlier, please do it. Give it a chance. And if you don't have fun, then don't. But I promise you, you'll have fun. And even if it doesn't like pop off forever, it's so worth it. It's just so much fun and rewarding and you meet really cool people. Yeah. And there's so many people that I met eight years ago, like as creatives that didn't work out then that I'm now working with now. And it's so cool to like, you know, as time goes by to go back and watch old videos. Like yeah. it's just like such a nostalgic feeling. It's so sick to be like, I did that. Then you just pull it up, show your family members and stuff. Yeah. It's really cool. It's worth it. Yeah. It's one of those things I'll say, it's like if you have that desire to do it, whatever it is, anything in life. I mean, I know this is like an overnight channel tour, but like TFIL is like where overnight came from. If you have something you want to do, please do it. Just try it. Even if you got to do it by yourself, it's so much fun. It's so worth it. Thank you all. So much for coming out.